Hey, I'm Bill Walton, and you're at Sports School. You've heard so many times over the course of your lives that your coach is saying, box out, box out. Boxing out is not about getting underneath the basket and pushing back. No, boxing out is preparation, because remember, failing to prepare is preparing to fail as a defensive player, keeping your man in an awkward, out of position situation so that when the shot is ultimately taken, you've already done all the work. Remember what the three rules are. Anticipate the shot will be missed, keep the hands above the shoulders, and then go get that ball. And if you're playing good defense here as your teammates are doing the same on the perimeter and you're always watching the ball because your vision never leaves the ball, a little bit of hand contact on your opponent here, as you're playing here and that shot is ultimately taken, then as you turn, hold your position here, your chin will then hit your shoulder on the turn, watching that ball on its way to the hoop, then that's your key to then make that move and open up because he's going to be coming this way and now you've got your man behind you, the basket here, the ball out in front of you, and then all the rules apply from that point. Go get it, land, and get the ball out in transition. The critical element in boxing out is the position work you do with your feet and your body before the shot is ever taken. So I'm in my defensive stance here. I've guarded my man. I've denied him reception of the ball. Something's happened over here on the other side of the court. They realize they're going to be foolish to try to come here. So they're going to put the shot up. And as I've guarded him here, then I start watching the shot, the arc of the ball, and as my chin then comes and hits my shoulder, that's my key to now I know I have to go get that ball. So as it now turns, I open up, I pivot. As he keeps coming, I keep my contact here. And now I'm here, able to go and incorporate all the other aspects of what we've worked on here at Sports School. Rebounding is not just the responsibilities of the big guys underneath the basket. It's a team responsibility that everyone must concentrate on. You're going to find yourself matched up against a high flyer on the perimeter, a Tracy McGrady, a Kobe Bryant, a Vince Carter, a Richard Jefferson, a Ray Allen. These guys who can kill you by getting to the offensive glass. Somebody that you have to keep off the boards. Remember, it's not so important that you get the rebound, it's important that your team gets the rebound. When you're out here playing your defense, is the techniques remain the same as underneath the basket, but your focus can't just be on standing here and watching and hoping that your teammate's gonna get the ball. Yes, you have obligations and responsibilities to cut the foul line for the long rebound that's gonna come bouncing out off the erratic long shot or a ball that's tipped out by the big guys. But when you're out here beyond the three-point line, Remember that it's all the same. You're playing your defense. You're watching that ball. Most importantly, though, don't let your man get to the basket area. And the same principle of keeping him on your backside as opposed to trying to back him up this way. No, no, no. Your position by denying him here and then at the last moment turning around will enable you to become a terrific defensive team rebounder. You may not have the size and strength that your opponent does. Realize, though, that you're a real player when you can compete in all aspects of this great game when your opponent is bigger, stronger, faster, has those big, rippling, powerful muscles. He can jump higher. When you can get it done against those guys, then you find yourself being a real player. And so while our demonstrator here will have to have the daunting task of having to keep me away from the basket, realize that he has the edge in quickness, in speed, in physical fitness, and all the little elements. Most importantly, though, the mental aspects, figuring out all the rules apply. But the great thing is, is that the little man right here, he's got the referee on his side. Use all the assets that you have at your disposal. When our demonstrator, who's obviously giving up a lot of size and strength to me, he has to be in his good position to keep me away from the basket, 
these elbows want to be hard and wide. Get right into that midsection of the big guy. Make him suck air. And then as I try to gain position by coming over with power and push him out of the way, he is going to use his hips just above my knee. The area in the lower thigh is the greatest weakness of the big player. Keep him off balance by putting that hip right into that thigh and making me move out of the way and never give up the contact because when I can create separation and get away from the smaller opponent, then I can use my skill and strength to move around. That's why he has to be in this position with the hands out the whole time, forcing the contact and also demanding that the referee make the right and appropriate call. So get in low, get down in the legs of the of the big guys, be able to push them away from that basket area and realize most importantly when you have the incredible disparity of size and strength that the number one goal is not for him to get the rebound but to make sure that I don't get it. That's why you have a team out there and the mismatch in size can be then transferred into an advantage on the offensive end. One of the great things about basketball is that even though the rules say this is a non-contact sport, you got to like to mix it up underneath the hoop here because men are made in the paint in this game and I've got some real men right here who are going to come and get involved in the best part of the game which is the head-to-head -head competition as to who's going to come up with that ball. And when you're underneath the boards here and you're trying to get those rebounds, remember it's the guys whose elbows are on top and so while our demonstrator here is going to be here. In this situation here, I have complete control because I can use my elbows as a lever. Now, in basketball, you have a responsibility to the game, to your opponent, to human decency to never be in a situation where your elbow makes contact with his face. Now, if he wants to come and bite your elbow, that's his problem, but your initiation of an elbow to the anything above the shoulders is completely and totally out of line and we'll have none of that here at sports school but when you're playing and that ability you see players all the time fighting to get their arms on top who's going to get their elbow right there so that you can be in a position of leverage of power so that once again you can be the one who is in control of the entire situation basketball is the perfect game you can practice it play it by yourself you never have to wait for anything other than the opening tip you're out there running, you're playing, the sweat just pouring off you, the wind blowing through your hair, you're talking, you're jabbering at the referees, with your coach, your teammates all the time. But one of the greatest things about basketball is when it's hot and heated inside, underneath the basket, where the fate of Western civilization is on the line. You're playing, maybe it's not going your way, but there is nothing like the perfectly placed elbow right into the midsection of the other guy to get you right back into your game where it all falls into place here at sports school.